Prayer 2, Unveiling the Holy Spirit. I believe in the healing power of God. I've seen God do miracles that defy explanation. And every time I pray for someone, my goal is to pray with childlike faith to believe that they will indeed be healed. But here's the reality. And I'm just going to be real with you. Sometimes I pray for people to experience healing and they get healed. Other times, I pray for people to experience healing, and they don't get healed right then and there on the spot. Faith doesn't deny reality. Faith faces reality with trust and hope. And I'm even going to show you in Scripture some instances where the miracle didn't manifest right away. And so when we face situations like these, it can become confusing, And the question arises, well, why didn't I get healed? Or why didn't the person I pray for get healed? Or what's blocking this miracle? What we're going to do right now is explore these questions using the scripture. First, I want to look at what can block a healing. Biblically speaking, there are some things that can block a healing from taking place. I'm going to give you the scripture for that. But then there are other instances where healing doesn't occur And you don't have an explanation that's biblical that can tell you why the healing is being blocked. And that's where people become discouraged. That's where people begin to battle with doubt. But remember, we do the possible. We pray. We believe. God is the one who does the impossible. So these may, to some, seem like statements of doubt. But they don't have to be statements of doubt. Again, faith does not deny reality. Faith faces reality with trust and hope. Faith can change reality through the power of God. And so we have to be honest about the things that we witness sometimes because there will be moments when you pray for someone and they don't get healed instantly, and this can be troubling. But as we'll see in Scripture, the Bible has answers, and the Bible instructs us on what to do during these times. Now, when you pray for someone, you should always pray believing that they will be healed right then and there. That's one side of the coin. Yes, you approach every person with faith. You approach every request with faith. When we do our healing services around the world, when I stand on that platform praying for the sick, I'm believing that every single person in that building will be healed. But we're going to explore the other side of that right now. If you're ready to receive what the scripture has to say on this matter, And I want you to write in the comment section right now, three simple words, give me truth. Now, you may not hear a lot of people talking about this because often it's easier to just avoid the difficult questions and it's easier to just pretend like these instances don't occur. So let's take a look first at one of the things that can block a healing. And remember, I'm going to show you things that can block a healing, but then I'm going to show you what to do after you've exhausted this list, after you've run through all of these biblical explanations, but are still left with questions. I'm going to show you what to do after you've used, if you will, deductive biblical reasoning. Number one, and this can block a healing, is doubt. Now, Mark chapter 6, verses 4 through 6 say this, Then Jesus told them, A prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his relatives and his own family. Verse 5 says, And because of their unbelief, He couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. So we're talking about Jesus, the son of the living God, God in the flesh, limited on what he was able to do because of the unbelief of the people in his hometown. Now, when we use this explanation, often people become defensive Because it does, in some instances, sound like a cop-out or a cruel explanation uh, to say that, well, you didn't get healed because you didn't have enough faith. And I will admit that there are some who use that excuse to try to blame people for every instance that a miracle doesn't happen. But just because this reason is abused doesn't mean that it can't serve a real purpose in explaining some instances. So even though it may not be the case with everyone, even though every miracle that doesn't occur uh, doesn't prove that the person didn't have faith, even though there are some people who have faith who don't get healed, we still can't just dismiss this reality. Why? Because the Bible paints a very clear picture for us. In fact, as you look at the scripture, you'll see that faith was often present when a miracle was done. The centurion's servant, the centurion 
had faith for the servant when Jesus spoke the word. Jairus' daughter, who was dead. Well, Jairus had faith for his daughter. So he was believing for his daughter's miracle. Even though the girl herself didn't have the faith, the father had faith for his daughter. Think about the man who was lowered through the roof when they broke through the ceiling to get him to Jesus. Well, Jesus saw the faith of the man's friends, seeing their faith, the scripture says. So faith has to be present in some way. Think of the woman with the issue of blood. She had faith for herself. So in many instances throughout the scripture, you'll hear Jesus say, your faith has made you whole or something to that effect using a similar phrase. So we can't deny that faith does play a role in divine healing. Now, this does not mean that when someone doesn't get healed, that they definitely didn't have faith. That's where it becomes cruel if we apply this as a generalization. It becomes cruel if we just use this explanation to dismiss every single individual who's still suffering in sickness. If we look at everyone who is sick and say, well, you don't have faith, then we're not properly applying the scripture. Because in some instances, there are people who have faith who still don't experience the miracle. That's not a statement of doubt. That's a statement of reality. So the scripture makes it clear that faith does indeed have to be present. But this doesn't mean that if someone isn't healed, that faith wasn't present at all, as we'll see the other biblical reasons here in a moment. So yes, doubt can play a role. So as you're exploring the scripture, looking for answers as to why healing didn't manifest, whether that be in you or in a loved one or in someone you prayed for, you have to keep this in mind that it could be the case that it was a lack of faith. So that's explanation number one is doubt. Doubt can sometimes block healing. Air 2, Unveiling the Holy Spirit.